All right, so the very first thing we're going to be talking about when it comes to electricity is the electric force, okay? And so this is one of the first new forces we're introducing from mechanics, All right? And so this is a new force. This force acts at a distance like gravity, and it's one of the fundamental forces of kind of the universe and how it operates just like gravitation is. And so um, it does act as a distance. And so let's kind of talk about the basics of it. So you probably learned this in chemistry at some point, but there are things called protons and electrons. There are positive charges and negative charges. Protons carry positive charges, electrons carry negative charges. The unit of charge is a coulomb. Okay, and that's our SI unit. The smallest unit of charge of that of a proton electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. You cannot have any fractions of these charges. These are the elementary charges. We sometimes denote this with the letter lowercase e. E is to denote that it is this value. Could be positive, or, I mean, it's a positive value, but for an electron, this is negative, and for a proton, this is positive, hence the term positive and negative charges. The core thing about Coulomb's law is you understand that like charges repel, that means two positive charges are gonna put exert a force away from each other, and opposite charges, a positive and a negative, will exert a force toward each other. So this is where it differs from gravity in the sense that we now have a repelling force, whereas gravity is always pulling, right? Two charges, when charges interact, they could be pulling or they could be pushing away from each other. The direction depends on the sign of the charge. And um, just one other thing, law of conservation of charge, charges cannot be created or destroyed. They have to exist somewhere. That will be important for some of the problems we do, as well as when we do circuits later on in um, the next unit. So let's kind of look at the kind of the Coulomb's law. This is the mathematical thing. It's very similar in terms of structure to Newton's law of gravitation. Objects with two charges will exert a force on each other. The direction depends on whether they're both positive or both negative or one positive, one negative. Um, the force equation is given by this. Now, this is a magnitude, right? So when we do this force equation, it looks very similar. Remember, force of gravity was G, some constant, times M1, M2 over R squared. Electrostatic force or Coulomb's law force right here, same thing. It's K, which is a constant, times the two charges that are interacting divided by the distance squared. So structurally very similar to Newton's law of motion. In this case, the K is a different, con instead of G, we use K. Uh, that's Coulomb's law constant. It's nine times 10 to the nine in terms of like SI units. And uh, sometimes it's written this way. You'll see this a lot. I tend to use K because it's simpler. You will see this one over four pi epsilon naught. That's called ver vacuum permittivity. You will see that in the equation sheets. I tend not to use this form when it comes to, because I think one, K is easier to write, and two, it's just like very similar, closer to Newton's law of gravitation, but you will see that sometimes. General process for forces is like any other force that we do, we're gonna start with our free body diagrams and use F net equals M at A. This is our unit two process. So if you don't remember how to do that, or if it's been a while, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Everything that we did with free body diagrams, we're just extending it now to add in a new force. Okay, and the rules are two like charges while force is pointing away from each other, two opposite charges while force is pointing towards each other, and this formula tells you the magnitude of that charge. Or sorry, magnitude of that force. So let's go through a few examples just to make sure. So what is the net electric force on the charge located in the lower right-hand corner of the triangle here? So. We have this guy right here. He's gonna have a free body, actually we'll just do the free body diagram on him. So there are two other objects here. So this charge is gonna exert a force on this guy. Now because these, so we're drawing a free body diagram of this thing right here. Because they're opposite charges, the force from this guy is going to point, when I draw my free body diagram, it's gonna to point towards it, okay? Now a lot of times with charges, we do ignore gravity because charges tend to have very, very small masses compared to it. If you are given the mass, or you sometimes will have to consider the mass, but unless you're told to consider it, like unless you're given the mass or something like that, generally we can assume that the mass is negligible because the electrostatic force the Coulomb from Coulomb's law is much stronger than gravitational force. So we're gonna ignore the free body diagram for gravity. So this one, we draw an arrow towards this guy because these are opposite charges. They will attract. This guy is going to pull on this thing, and we'll call this F2Q for this one here. And then these two charges, and then this charge will exert a force also, right? But it will repel, so it's not going to be drawn towards it. It's going to be pushed away from that, and that's going to be the force from the Q guy right there. 
And this is an equilateral triangle, so we know that this angle here, by the way, is 60 degrees. And that's going to be important because after we do the free body diagram, what do we do at this point? We decompose forces. Okay, so then this is F2Q cosine 60 degrees, and this is F2Q sine of 60 degrees. Okay, and then we're just going to sum up the net forces. We're going to add up in the x direction, right? If we say, we'll say right is positive, we'll make, I don't know, up positive, I guess. So then our net force in the right, in the x direction, we have FQ to the right, and we have F2Q cosine 60 degrees to the left. Now we're going to use Newton, uh, Coulomb's law to find FQ. FQ is going to be K, and then the two charges involving with FQ are Q and Q, so it's Q times Q, divided by the distance between them, which is A squared. And then minus F2Q is the force between here and here. It's K times the charges involved, Q. And notice I'm not going to plug in negative Q. I'm just going to plug in 2Q because the formula we're using here is the magnitude. Okay, We've already handled the direction in our free body diagram. So we want the F2Q to be a positive value because I put the minus sign already to indicate the directions pointing to the left. So we don't want to put in a negative Q to make that whole thing positive. That's going to mess it up. So when you're using the F2Q, think of this as this is the magnitude that we're using. Okay, we don't, we don't want to use a negative value to indicate sine. We do that as part of our free body diagram. Okay, and then the distance between them again is A, so that's A squared. And then cosine of 60 degrees, yeah, I would just do cosine of 60 degrees. Actually, cosine of 60 degrees is one half, so we can do like that. Right, and so then this is going to cancel with that guy. This is going to be kq squared over a squared minus kq squared over a squared. And so that's going to be zero in the x direction. So interesting. Now in the y direction, we only have one component in the y direction. That's the f2q sine of 60 degrees. All right, and so then that's going to be k. It's going to be the just same as this guy, q2q over a squared. But then the sine of 60 degrees is going to be um, root 3 over 2. Or you could just put in the decimal. It's fine. That will cancel with that guy. So we're going to get root 3 kq squared over a squared. That would be the net force. And because we only have a y component, that is our overall net force. If we, wanted, if we had an x and a y component, right, we would do vectors, add them up, magnitude and direction, just like we would if you had an x and a y component. But now we only have a y component only pointing upwards. OK, let's take a look at this. Two identical spheres of mass m and unknown angle theta are hung from a string of length l. They repel each other at angle theta. Determine the unknown charge q. So two identical spheres in an unknown identical charge. So they both have a charge q on them. And they're, we're given a mass, so we are going to include gravity, and we have some strings. So we're going to do free body diagrams just like we did before. So pick which one to draw a free body diagram. We'll pick this guy here. Doesn't matter. It's symmetric. So we have gravity, right, mg acting downward on this guy. Then we also have the rope pulling on it, tension, right, at an angle theta. And this angle here would be theta. That's alternate interior angles from your geometry days. And then you have a, because they're like charges, there's going to be a repelling force away. And which direction is away is think of drawing a line of axes between them and just saying it's along that line, along the straight line that connects the two. So it's going to be that's going to be the Fe for electrostatic force, right? And then what do we know? We know the acceleration is zero because it's just hung there. So the net force ought to be zero. So we got to think about the x direction. We'll make right positive. We'll make up positive. And we'll do F net equals ma, which is zero in this case because we know the acceleration is zero. So we have the electrostatic force to the right. Uh, we got to decompose. I forgot to decompose. So the tension here is going to be, it's going to be T cosine theta. And then here we have t sine theta, right? So Fe is pointing to the right. T sine theta is pointing to the left. Those are the only horizontal forces. That's equal to 0. So the electrostatic force is going to be kq times q. They're both q, divided by the distance between them. Now, this length here is L. And so this length here of this right triangle would be L sine theta. So the distance between them is double that. It's 2L sine theta squared, like that, minus t sine theta is equal to 0. So that's our first equation. And we're going to solve for q, but we need to know the tension. So we're going to look at the y direction. The upward force, if we make up positive, we have t cosine theta pointing up. 
we have mg pointing down, and that's the net force, and that equals zero. So we know the t is equal to mg over cosine theta, which we can then plug into here to then get rid of the tension, and we can then solve for q in terms of other variables. So this is going to be kq squared q times q. Go ahead and square all of this. This is going to be 4l squared sine squared theta minus mg over cosine theta times sine theta equals 0. And I just really want to solve for q. So we're going to move this to the other side, right? And then we're going to multiply. So we're going to get kq squared over 4l squared sine squared theta is equal to mg sine theta over t cosine theta. You can simplify this however you want. We're going to multiply that up and divide by k. So you get q squared is going to be mg sine cubed theta times 4l squared, because sine squared times sine is sine cubed over cosine theta. And there's a k down here. And then the q is just going to be the square root of that. right? So that would be our answer there like that. Again, similar process. The only thing we're adding in is that new electrostatic force. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice, maybe you just need more guidance and things like that, I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in their AP classes.